go through that as well. Uh, let me see if I got all the screenshots. There is one that I'm unable to copy. I don't know what's wrong with this. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Oh, I see. OK, so I copied half of the question. Let me copy the rest of it because I think I only copied question 21, not the table as well. It's important to have all the information. OK. Uh, I hope it will be visible. Let me just also check if the email came through. I am so sorry for this, but okay, thank you. Okay, okay. I have your tutorial letter 101, so it's fine. We can use that as well. Let me just double check. So there are no tables on the tutorial letter 101. Um, that is why I need the study guide. The, the one that has tables will assist because when we go look for the p-value, we need to use the table when we... Okay. The challenge I have is in my previous encounters everything was on my hard drive and my hard drive when i reformatted my hard drive i lost everything so i don't have cal information everything i have to do it means i have to start from scratch beautiful Okay, I'm going to share one of the other things that uh, I think I will share with you in the chat as well. You can download it. I will paste it there. It's the document that we go. I'm going to use now with you. I must just apologize again for all this. Next time we meet, it will be fine. We will. Uh, how do I attach something on the chat? Okay. It's impressive. Okay, I cannot attach a document on the chat. So, anyway. Okay, so let's start. Uh, last thing, I just need to check if the email came through. Thank you, the email came through. Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay. One last email, and I think this is, okay. So I'm going to assume, let me go back to the presentation mode. I'm going to assume this was taken from a tutorial letter, right? Tutorial letter 101, and this, whoever gave me access to this. I'm going to go out and share the Okay. Okay, so now we can start. Uh, somebody started recording the session. I don't know who started. 
Um, mm. Okay. Maybe it's one of the uh, people from UNISA. Okay, so when it comes to your module, since they already started the presentation, the, the recording, I don't have to start from the beginning. Uh, when it comes to your module, you just need to know how to do the hypothesis testing. So this is, I'm going to email or put this somewhere on the chat, if I can find a way to put it on the chat and share with everyone. Um, or I will post it under the notes section on my UNISA. There is a link where you can access the notes as well. Um, so this will guide you in terms of um, what kind of a test you need to be doing. So you need to ask yourself certain questions as well. Am I looking at different, uh, the, uh, doing a hypothesis, looking at the difference between two groups or one group? or am I doing a between two variables? So you need to ask yourself those kind of a question. So let's say we're looking at the pink section. If we only concentrate on the pink side, where we ask ourselves if we're calculating or we're doing a hypothesis on two groups. When you do for two groups, you have to ask yourself two questions. Is my population standard deviation given in the question? Remember the population standard deviation. Either they will say population standard deviation or they will give it to you as sigma like that. So if they give it to you as sigma in a symbol, this is sigma tells you population standard deviation. If they have told you that it is 3.5 or it's 10 or it's 1.5, 1.3 then you know that it is given and when it is given we're going to use the z test so the most important thing is the population standard deviation for group between a group so and that is the formula that you will use to standardize your scores or your mean scores so which is the sample mean minus your population standard deviation or population mean divided by the standard error. And remember this, this is a standard error and the standard error here is population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And they would have given you the population standard deviation. You must remember that. If the population standard deviation is not known, then it means they wouldn't have given you the population standard deviation, but they would have given you a sample standard deviation, which is represented by an S, symbol S. If they give you S is equals to 1.3, 1.4, or they say sample standard deviation, then you know that they haven't given you the population standard deviation, so your sigma is unknown. And when it is unknown, then you're going to use the t-test. Which also is your sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. And you can see that the standard error here uses the sample standard deviation and the square root of n. And that is if you're doing a hypothesis testing for a group. So this one is for one group. So let's say they give you one group and they say you're going to test um, 
the maths for students who wrote or who are doing Psych 307. So it's only one group, only one group. Then it means you're going to check whether are they giving you the population standard deviation or are they giving you a sample standard deviation. If they give you the population standard deviation, we use the Z test. If they're giving you the sample standard deviation, we're going to do a T test. Then, um, excuse me, excuse yes. me, can you just repeat that again because that is very important there. Okay. It is very, very important. Okay. That's how to, to just to know when to use what test. Yes. Thank you. So, can you just repeat that again for me? One group, meaning they say uh, test the hypothesis for the scores that students who wrote Psych 303. You need to, to prove that the mean is different to the the mean is different to the population something like that so the sample mean is different to the population mean so it's from one group of students and if they give you the population standard deviation and they say the population standard deviation is this then you're going to use a z test for that one from that one group one group meaning one let me look for an example from your study guide or from, let's see, from, from here, from the questions that they are asking here. It needs to be, uh, for example, like this one, it's only the exam marks. So they can ask you to calculate this and they say the, um, the, the exam mark is more than Oh, sorry, it's more than 30%. Uh, we need to go back there, or we can use another one. Okay. Or we can use this. Let's use this one. Let's use this question here. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah, we can use this question. So you can see that on this question, they're only talking about the depression score. They are not saying, uh, two groups, they're not giving you two different groups. They are only giving you one group of uh, patients who were diagnosed. And then they give you the depression score and they say you need to test that the clinical depression score is greater than 120. It's one group. It's not multiple groups that they did, only one group. And they're asking you to test the hypothesis I'm not going to go deeper into the hypothesis just to understand what you need to look out for in order to know which one you need to use. So here they say she uses a random sample of 64 drawn from a population of diagnosed patient with the mean which that X bar, that bar should have been on top of the X with the mean of 127 and S of 24. Remember that? They didn't give you sigma. So this is not sigma. This is S. Let's go back to our paper. If they give you S, we use T test. You see that? It means the population standard deviation is not known. If they would have given us sigma, then we will use the Z test. So coming back here. Therefore, it means this question when we answer the hypothesis, if we were going to have to test the hypothesis on this, we were going to use t-test. But for this one, they just want you to calculate the standard error, which is your standard error on this. If we go back to the t-test formula, remember everything underneath there is your standard error. We can also call this x sx bar that is your standard error so they just want you to calculate sx bar sx bar which is your sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n you are given all the information there is your n and there is your standard deviation you should be able to calculate that okay so that is when the population standard deviation is unknown for one group. Now, 
If you have two groups, if they say test for math and test for physical science, two groups of test, or maybe they can say test uh, English and and math, test if the, the, the scores are different or something like that. Then you have two groups. You no longer have one group. You have two groups that you need to test from. Now you need to ask yourself the following question. When you ha have two groups, where you have to test the difference between two groups, you ask yourself this question. One, are the groups independent or the groups dependent? How do I even know? That's what you're going to ask yourself. How am I going to know whether the groups are dependent and independent? Okay. The two groups will be independent if they don't come from the same population. Then it means one group doesn't affect the other one. But if they come from the same population, let's say, uh, maybe I used the wrong, a wrong example when I chose uh, math and English. So let's say we test a, uh, Limpopo people and Western Cape people. So they both come from different groups. Then uh, the two groups are independent from one another. So the other does not influence the other. So if we take from two groups and we want to test, uh, let's see, but two groups can be, okay, I'll, I'll still have to go back to the maths and the English. So there are still two groups of of information that you need to test, the English and the maths. You need to test the difference between those two groups. But those two groups come from almost similar population, so it means they depend on one another. So if you didn't study for maths, you will not do well in maths anyway. So. And if you concentrated more on the English side, so, or let's even use an, another example, the pre and the post. So if one, you do one test before and another test after. So those two groups are dependent, independent. And that's how you will know which one is dependent and independent. So, for example, if the two groups are independent, then you will take the difference between mean one and mean two when you calculate, divide by the standard error, and the standard error will be the standard deviation of one divided by, oh, not the standard deviation, the variance. The variance from group one divided by the sample size of group one plus the variance of group two divided by the, the sample size of group two. That is if the two groups are independent. If the two groups are dependent, so it means they come from the same, the pre and the post. So then that one, you take the difference of the match pair. So they have to be from the same. So it has to be, so you, you, you take a test before and a test after. So you take the difference of that and you're going to find the standard deviation of the two, the difference between the two. And I think the reason the other person was asking, how do we find the standard deviation? It's in relation to this because sometimes they don't give you the standard deviation of the difference. You need to calculate that standard deviation of the difference. Divide by the square root of n. And this is the standard error for those difference. With, okay, the other thing that you need to also remember with the two whether the one is independent or the other. So the two groups for independent, if we have N1, it does not have to be equals to N2. So N1 can be eight and N2 can be 10. 
but for dependent groups, N1 should, if it's 10, if it's equals to 10, therefore N2 as well needs to be equals to 10 because they need to be uh, matched. Okay, let's look at an example from, from here. Where do, or how do you determine which one is independent and which one is not? So, okay, so this is the, right, the T one, so we're not here. Okay, there we go. So this one. Now, here we have a statement that says an educational psychologist wants to establish if raised expectation has an effect on how students do in mathematics test. Select 100 students at random, oh, she selects 100 students at random. Half of the students from a control group refer to group one and we're told that they have to do 20 maths problem. But that is just an exercise to practice their skill. The remaining 50 attempted, uh, are told to complete the same problem, but this is called group two, which is our treatment. But their marks will count towards their final marks. She decides to use a T test to compare the results. Which of these two tests is she using? Let's go back. I want the answer from you now. Remember where I wrote with the red pen? Two independent groups, two dependent groups. Independent groups, they do not have to be equal. Dependent groups, they have to be the same. Independent group, one does not influence the other because one does not depend on the other. Dependent group, one depends on the other. Okay. Remember that. Reading the statement, we have 100 students, 20 were given the math problem, and 50 were also given the math problem. The first question you need to ask yourself. Um, can, can I also ask, uh, I know that I, we didn't start the session properly um, by introducing, there's a good slide that I always like. Please mute yourself, please switch off the video and always participate in class. So can I ask uh, in order for the bandwidth and all that, everybody when they join the class to Switch of their videos. Thank you. Okay, so while I was busy talking, I hope you reflected on this question. Is this an independent or dependent? Miss Elizabeth, I think it is dependent because it's coming from the same group. Um, am I correct there? Uh, even though they come from the same group, does one influence the other? Does one depend on the other? Okay, so that makes them independent because it doesn't yes. affect each so other. You, Thank you. Yes. You need to ask yourself that question. It's very, very important. Even though they come from the same group, because they can still come from the same group, like I said, from the same group, it will be mathematics, but you do a pre-test because now you know what the questions looks like. Pre, you do that, you fail, then you take the post-test, the same question again. 
So already because you were exposed to the first, the second one is dependent on how well did you do on the other one? Because if you did well on the other one, you will do much even better on the second one. If you did, because it's the same thing. One depends on the other. So on this one, there are two distinct groups and one does not depend on the other one. They are both independent because whatever um, group one does does not influence what group two does. Do you understand? The independent. Yes, that, that makes sense. Thank you, Ms. Yes. So then if this is independent, which one are you going to be choosing? Option one, option two, or option three? Let's go back. You must pay attention to the formulas as well when you work through your questions. They give you option one, option two, and option three. So this is one, this is two, this is three. Which one are you taking? Option two. It will be option two. Okay. This will be if you had to calculate the test statistic, you will choose that test statistic to solve your problem. Okay. So those are the things that you need to keep at the back of your mind as well. When you answer the questions, try and read it through again and again and again. So probably next time when we do things properly, we will go into how do we solve problems? How do we read the statistics questions and understand and unpack them? Because today just the hijack session. OK, so. Let's see. So we've covered the green part. So now let's go and cover the other part, which is there when you are given two variables. So with hypothesis testing as well, you can test two variables. So yeah, we we can test whether uh, late coming and cold weather goes together. So we can say, Late coming and weather. And is there a relationship between? So when they ask you things like, is there a relation? Now we, we're moving away from the difference. We're talking about, is there a relationship between uh, the two variables? When they ask in that manner, if they ask you to test whether there is a different or not, the, let me not put the difference because then um when you do the difference you might think of the other part that we just covered so when they ask you to test whether there is a relationship between two variables then you need to ask yourself the variables are they numerical or are they categorical two things am i testing numerical variables are they numbers or am I testing the categorical where there are categories like gender, like race, like school type, like uh, what else? And others. And then numerical, like scores. If they ask you to test the scores of certain or depression scores or uh, outcomes, uh, then yeah then you need to ask those questions if they ask you to test the relationship between two variables and i think here where they say there is a difference i think here we need to change this to a relationship because here we're talking about is are the two related two variables related to one another so for numerical variables then whether it's interval or ratio for numerical variable, as long as it's numerical, then we use Pearson R, which is Pearson coefficient of correlation score, which also is called R. And the formula we use, That complex formula, that's the one that you need to use. I am not sure if you are expected to use the formula 
but if you have a calculator, you can calculate R using your calculator. It's just that now we don't have a lot of time. I can show you how to calculate the R on your calculator. We will see how, how far we get. The session is up to seven o'clock. We might get time. We have an hour left. Okay, so if it's numerical variable, we use R, coefficient of correlation or the correlation coefficient. If it is categorical variables, which are categories or labels, we can call them that, which are like your nominal scales or ordinal scales, then we use chi-squared. Or they call it Pearson chi-squared. We use chi-squared and with chi-squared, we use the formula, the sum of your observed value minus your expected value squared divided by your expected value. And I can show you how to calculate those expected values. So, let's find an example of when do we use any of those. Mm, okay, so this. Mm, actually, you might not even be doing the R squared. I'm not sure. Do you do R squared? Or am I introducing you to? Yes, you do chi squared. There we go. So, where you see this, it's a chi squared. And also, coefficient of correlation. So, you, you need to read the question. On this question, yes, this question, a researcher asks a statistician to help her with to determine whether there is a significant relationship between two variables, gender and color. The statistician points out that both variables are nominal level of measure. Therefore, what kind of a test are you going to do? Numerical, we use Pearson R. Categorical, we use chi squared. If you don't know how to pronounce chi squared, you can just tell me that one or two, which one or three, if there is the third one. Number one. That will be number one because they are categorical. If this was a score uh, for math test and this was a score for another variable, then we will use Pearson correlation. If we go to the bottom one, they say you must calculate coefficient of correlation. Um, so they're asking you to calculate R on this. Do you guys have calculators? Can I get an indication of what type of calculators do you have? You can unmute or you can type in the chat because I've got multiple calculators, different calculators. Miss Elizabeth? Yes. Um, at the previous question, question 64, it says there um, the statistician points out that both variables are nominal level. Am I correct if I say the moment I read the words nominal, I already know that it would be the chi square? Or is yes. it more to that? Okay. Okay. Yes. So I can just use that as my reference. Yes. Thank you. 
calculators. You can unmute and tell me so that I can open one calculator. I show you how to calculate the R. I'm trying to get to my calculators just now. Oh, do you have calculators, guys? Let's see the chat. I use the I use my laptop, my uh, guys. Hey, if you were going to sit for an exam, were you going to use your your laptop and your phone? You need a proper calculator. You must go, uh, Kim. You must go buy either a sharp calculator or a Casio, the one that Lizette has posted at the bottom there. Um, I will show you how to use it. Should and it be a recorded, Yeah, since this is recorded, you can come back to this and and use that. So let me open the calculator. Da da da. Ways. I, I didn't think that I will be showing you the calculator. Mm. Sorry, ma'am. Should our cal should we use scientific calculators? Yes, you are allowed to use a scientific calculator. Okay, because I tried to use one, but it was complicated for me. I just put it aside. I don't know how. Ha! Huh. Don't <laughs> worry, because you never had me. <laughs> <laughs> it was too so complicated. I just can't Isn't figure it? it out. Yes, now you have me, so don't worry about about it. Okay. So, okay. So I, I was trying to open all my calculators so that I have them ready to help you to, to show you. So my screen will be a mess right now because I'm not I'm going to share my entire screen. <clears throat> uh, so that's my screen. Let's go back to our question. So how do we calculate this? So this easy because it's only one two three four five five so it's easy so <clears throat> i'm gonna start with the case show if you look at my case show and you look at your case show you will see that it looks exactly the same as the one that you have in front of you um and it's the same as the one that lizette has posted it's just that this one is an online one so <clears throat> okay to capture the data you do the following so you can come back and watch the recording time and again and again and again you need to put your calculator to state mode by pressing the mode function there is the mode so when you press mode it will give you a menu we're putting it to a state mode, so we're going to press whatever the button that relates, depending on the type of a calculator you are using as well. Depending on the number that the state is linked with, you're going to press that. On my one is three, so I'm going to press three. Then it shows me one, which is one minus var, and two, which is a plus b. Only keep to those two. This, we're going to use it later on when I show you how to calculate the standard deviations. Ne? This is when you want to calculate the coefficient of correlation. You will choose A plus BX, where it says 2. So we press 2, and it gives us the table. As you can see, I also have X and Y, and the table also is X and Y. So to capture the data, we're going to press the equal sign and the value. So we just say two equal. And that's how you kept, uh, uh, capture the data. And we're only going to capture 
x values the way they appear and we also going to capture the y values the way they appear do not mix them up so you just press two equal then the next one is seven equal it will and you can see that the black line moves as well to the next row to the next row then four equal and five equal and one equal now I've captured all five because there are one, two, three, four, five. So I've captured all of them. To capture the Y values, I need to go to the right side. By using the arrows, you have those arrows. So if I press the left, oh, not the left, right arrow, it will take me to the right side. But I need to go to the top of the table to capture the values. So you just use the up, up, up until you get to one. Uh, where am I now? Okay, up, 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 three, two, one. There. So where X is two, I must start there. Two equal, seven equal, four equal, five equal, one equal. I've kept just all of them if you want to check you just go up and see if all the values correspond. and once you are done you can go ac ac your data is stored in the in the memory of the calculator do not panic is there if you want to get your data and see how it looks you can press the shift button you press shift and to press button number one where it says stat s t a t it's number one and if i want to go and see the data there is number two i can go and press two it will give me my table but we're not interested in seeing the data we're interested in calculating r so go back clear the calculator ac and you press shift you go back to one and you will see that we have type. This will tell you the type of data that you have. You have the data, we've looked at it. You have the sum. If I come back here, remember we had this values like sum X, Y, sum X, sum, if I make this bigger so that you can see what I'm referring to. Sum X, Y, which is sum X times Y, sum X, is the summation of x, which means it's the sum of all the x values. Sum of y is the sum of all the y values. Sum xy is the sum of all the values of x times y, sum x and so forth. On your calculator, you can calculate them. When you click on the sum, like three, you will see all these. Uh, the values that you can use to come back and substitute into the formula if you want. There is your sum x, which is that value, sum xy, which is that value, sum x, so this is not sum x, sum y, it's sum of x times y, so that is number five, is that value. So you can see that all these values, you can calculate them and come here and substitute, but we don't want to go through that. So I was just showing you on your calculator. We go back, shift, state. The var is to is to find the standard deviation of the x and the standard deviation of the y value. You can look at that. You press button number four. As you can see there, that is the mean of x. There is the mean of y. That is the population standard deviation for x. That is the sample standard deviation for x. That is the population standard deviation for y and the sample standard deviation of y. I don't know where you're going to use that, but I'm just showing you that the possibilities are there. Uh, okay, we're not looking for that. We're looking for R. Okay, shift, stand. When we click on the reg, the reg calculates the regression. Remember the regression line, it, y is equal to ax plus b. That will calculate that. So 
you click on five because reg corresponds to five and that is where we're going to find the r as well so there is your coefficient of correlation this is if we want to estimate the value of x and if we want to estimate the value of y and this is the slope uh, a plus bx so this is the intercept and this is the slope okay we're looking for r so you just press three and equal instead of doing this whole calculation the very long way you can find the answer as quickly as possible sometimes and your r is one and i can check if r is actually one by pressing shift and going back to rec and pressing b the value of B is two. If B is negative, therefore it means R will also be negative. So the B value is one, so it's positive. So it's also then I've got the right value of R. Because on your calculator, if you remember when we did the state mode, it was A plus BX. Remember that we pressed the button that looks like this. So where B is your slope and A is your intercept. Okay, so you can calculate the value of your coefficient of correlation without stressing about the long formula. Ooh. Okay, so that is one calculator. The other calculator, which is the Casio, or not Casio, sharp. Uh, depending on also your sharp calculator, some sharp calculators have all the information you need on here. So if you look here, you have your X bar, you have your uh, SX, which is the standard deviation for the sample standard deviation, the population standard deviation for Y, for X. This whole row is for X. That one is for the y. The sum, remember those sum x, y, the sum x and the sum x squared, sum x, y, x, sum, sum, and the n. So you also have all of them in front. Because they are written in green, on a sharp calculator, you're going to press the alpha button to reach those button. But like everything else, you need to first store your values by putting your calculator to state mode. So you press mode, you can see there, state corresponds to one, you press one, and you have SD. SD will help us when we do the calculation for the standard deviation, for the mean, and so forth, because we'll be working with one variable. So now we're working with two. We're going to use the one that says line. So line is for the regression line. So it corresponds to button number one. And then our calculator is ready. It's on state mode one. So once it's on state mode one, it means we are ready to calculate the regression questions. So if I go back, because that my, my values are hidden, I know it's 27451. Uh, you must help me if I get lost. So on this calculator, we're going to use M plus and store. So those two buttons are very important to us. If you are using a financial calculator, those who have a financial calculator, you still follow the same steps. But on your calculator, you will have a data change there, not an M plus, but a data change. But everything else looks almost exactly the same. So you will have store and data change it will it will look like a like this and then i think it's written change i don't know how to write uh i was never good at writing at school so mind my handwriting i was that kid that was always getting beaten because the teachers can't read what i wrote maybe probably i should have been a, a doctor so, but it's written data, data change somewhere there. It's got 
the arrows at the bottom and the bottom at the top. Okay, so, but we're using this one. So we're going to press store and press the M plus. So let's, and on this one, we do both of them at the same time. So it means we're going to do seven, uh, what? It's two and two, seven and seven, four and four and five and five and one and one. So we're going to press that and then press M plus and then press the value and press STO. And we continue like that. So we say two, store. Oh, I've got them the other way around. So we press two first and then we say store. So it will be store. Two store and then two M plus. That's how that's the the logic. Two store two M plus. And then it will say data set one. So it captured that line. Now we move on and capture the whole until it says data set five. So then it will be seven store seven M plus. Four store STO four M plus. Five STO five. M plus. Those who are using the financial calculator, where I'm saying M plus, you're going to say data change. The last one, one store one data change or M plus, and it will say data set five, and then it means I've captured all of the data. Here, you cannot go and find the table because the table doesn't exist. You need to be sure that you have captured the right values onto your calculator. If you make a mistake, it's fine. You can clear your calculator. There is a CA. So you press second function, CA. It will clear your calculator, and then you can start capturing again the data. Okay. So once you have captured your data, you can go on and off your calculator. And we can answer any of the questions that we need to answer. Now we need to do R. So R is here on the division side. Look on your calculator and see if you can identify where R is on your sharp calculator because some sharp calculators don't look like this. So if you bought the latest sharp calculator, there is another sharp calculator where not all the values are written in green here. The, the STA is written somewhere at the top here and it's written in orange. Pay attention to your calculator. If you need more help, I don't have a WhatsApp link. I will share with you the WhatsApp link before the end of the session so that you can join that and then we can have discussions as well offline. OK. Um, now we're ready to answer the question, which is the R. If we were doing the equation of a straight line like we had with this way, it says A plus BX, you can also answer it because there is your A and there is your B. There is your intercept and there is your, uh, your slope. And if we want to estimate the value, there is the value to estimate the value of X. This is to estimate the value of Y but we are interested in R, so we just press the green button, which is alpha, and then we press division, which is R, as you can see, but you also have to press the equal sign to read the answer that you're looking for. And there is your R, as you can see, it's the same as what we had from the previous one. And that's how you use your calculator to calculate coefficients of R without doing the complex formula, which is this, which is time consuming. Then you need to know how to interpret the R values anyway. OK, so that is how you test the question or the, the, the information. OK, let's go down with question 
Um, some of the things here are just like things that you need to know. Mm, okay, so here is another one. Um, it's about the coefficient of correlation. You need to also know how to interpret the coefficient of correlation that zero means there is no relationship. One means there is a positive strong relation or a perfect strong relationship. Negative one means there is a strong negative relationship, perfect relationship. You need to also know how to interpret it in terms of the other values, like in between like 50%, what is 0 0.5 mean? And what 0 0.2 mean? and what 0 0.8 mean, whether it's negative or positive, strong relationship, weak relationship, you need to know how to do that, how to interpret that. You also need to know, because I can see here, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone doesn't know how to answer question 61 because I already gave you the answer. So questions like this, you need to know the following with this. So you know that you have two types of variables. You know that you have a numerical variable and you have categorical variable. You need to know that for categorical variables, because it's variables that you can put into categories, what type of visualizations you can do when you have categorical variable. And they are very limited, only only two uh, visualizations you can, or oh, one visualization, oh no, three visualization and a table. You can do a summary table. You can do a contingency table, which remember contingency category one and category two, yeah where you can do that. Summary table is just to summarize your categories into table where it has your frequencies and your percentages, where it's your categories here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, Coke, Sprite, like that. That is a summary table. So you just need to know that. In terms of other visualizations, which are not tables, and this is where I don't like writing on, on a PDF. It takes forever to wipe. So you can do those as tables. Then you can also summarize it in terms of bar chart or pie chart. So those are the, 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 the things that you can do. This is a bar chart. Like I said, please ignore my handwriting. Maybe in my next life, I will become a doctor. So I can write scripts. OK, so that's how you summarize categorical data. Summarizing numerical data, we use what we call a frequency distribution, which is a, a table that summarizes your frequency dis distribution. We use frequency distribution. And from a di frequency distribution, because you take your numerical data, you put it into categories, what we call the class intervals. You group your data into different classes. And those are becomes your category. And then you can do your frequencies, your car, your your percentages, your cumulative frequencies, and so forth. That's what we call a frequency distribution. Numerical data, you can do a scatter plot. You can do a histogram. I am sure that you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a scatter plot. Remember, a scatter plot is that one way you have all the values for your X and your Y scatter plot a histogram is a bar chart for numerical values and you can develop it 
from a frequency distribution and with the difference between a histogram and a bar chart is a bar chart the bars will never touch on a histogram the bars when one ends the other one starts that's a histogram this is a histogram a scatter plot what else can you do you can do a cumulative polygon a frequency polygon you can do a an ogive um you can do a box plot uh what else that's all i can think of right now so in terms of this information that you are given on question number what is the question question 66 it says the number of psychiatric patients are classified into four categories so already you should already jump up and down and say oh this one uh, how many marks do you get for each question they don't give you the masks the marks so that you know how much you are scoring here so you should be jumping up and down and say oh they say categories categories you should already know by then which uh, graph you're going to be using which one of the following is suitable for cross classifying and also even they say that cross classifying this information against gender which one can you use to cross classify a contingency it's a contingency table because you have category uh, what happened you have oh sorry you have category one which will be your schizo uh, your category of schizophrenia and category two will be your gender that will be that so psych is not that difficult ne? so i guess those who are writing you will get it right so let's see what else i can help you with to understand uh, I'm trying to look at the questions where we can use a table. And remember what I just said, if they ask you relationship, if they ask you about the relationship, you must think of chi-square and Pearson R. You must ask yourself, is it the numerical or is it the categorical? You must think of that because here they say what is the relationship that exists between gender and type of work and they give you t-test chi-squared and coefficient of correlation do you know which one you're going to be using the first question you ask yourself is i'm looking at the a relationship Ask yourself, is gender and type of work, is it, are they numeric? Because already test is not an option. Test of two independent sample is not an option for the answer. T-test is not an option for a question where they ask you to find the relationship. So gender type of work, is it numeric or is it categorical? That's the first question you ask yourself. Is it categorical? It's categorical. And if it's categorical, we the use chi-squared. So you will okay. have your answer there and there. So you will know that we're using number two. Oh, sorry. I haven't been looking at my, uh, what do you call that? My, uh, chat and i know that some of you have been posting sorry to take you back is there recording after this lesson oh yes they record the session is recorded somebody has started the recording recording has started uh okay uh, unfortunately, one needs a scientific calculator because normal calculator does not have the functions. 
Yes, normal calculator does not have a function to do the standard deviation. You need the square root to calculate some of the things, some normal calculators, you will struggle to do that. So please, um, before you go right, go invest skip uh, if if you like eating kfc chicken again uh, pizza mcdonald all those you're going to uh, starve yourself just to get a calculator in order for you to pass that or psych ne? invest in that okay so let's go back to uh where were we okay we are here so some of the questions they're not really uh, um my uh what you call that my specialty in terms of your psych questions sometimes i i notice that you also talk about things that i don't cover in states uh, so but doesn't mean i cannot help in unpacking some of them so we can start at the top I'm not going to do all of them because some of them I think they are straightforward. For example, like psychological research, you know how to define your psychological research questions like this. I cannot assist you with that one. Uh, so in statistics, we have, uh, let's see what time is it? We are on half past we have 30 minutes. Statistics has two branches. Uh, or research, or I, I can call it statistics because that's what we do. Statistics has two branches. We have inferential statistics. We have descriptive statistics. Descri descriptive statistics describes your data in terms of where your data is located. Inferential statistics tells you how dispersed your data is. Now, I have a problem with the question that they post to you here. Only those are part of the inferential statistics, but we use the mean as part of calculating the variance and the standard deviation, but it does not mean the mean needs to be part of the variance, the variance and the standard deviation. The mean is part of descriptive statistics, which also includes the mean, the mode, the median. They tell you where your data is located. They give you the locality of your data. That is why they are called the measures of central location or the measures of central tendencies. They are there to describe your data. And they can also give you the shape of your data because they describe your data. The standard deviation, the variance, the range, the quartiles, the percentile, they give you how dispersed is your data. The they give you the spread of your data. How far apart are your data from the mean? And those we call them the. Uh, oh, sorry, they are also part of the. Oh, I'm, I'm now I'm now in cloud nine. Sorry, let me take you back. Sorry, I know. Instead, we have two branches. I'm, I'm already in cloud nine myself. Sorry, sorry for confusing you. I need to come back. We have two branches. Oh, yeah, these are also part of the descriptive statistics. They are all part of descriptive statistics. There is no problem with this question. Let me come back to F now. So two branches of statistics, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics describes your data in terms of the locality, the shape, the uh, spread. That's what it does. The locality, which is central measures of central tendency, the mean, the mode, the median. The spread in terms of the standard deviation, the range, the variant. The shape in terms of whether is it positively skewed or negatively skewed. And we can describe it also in terms of tables and charts. That is descriptive statistics, just describes your data. 
inferential statistics, on the other hand, it's about inferring the information or making conclusions about the population based on the sample information that you collected from the population. So I nearly confused you right there. So the mean, the variance, the range, the standard deviation, then they form part of Is it inferential or is it descriptive? So some of the example for inferential statistics is everything that we have been doing here. All this form part of what we call inferential statistics. Because yeah, we take the sample, we infer and we make conclusion about the population. That's what we have been doing with this. So you need to know what the mean, the range, the variance, and standard deviation are the inferential statistics or descriptive statistics. Variables are characteristics that describes your population or your sample of interest. For example, a variable is like gender, race, and so forth. So in this regard, with this question too, your answer would have been question will be option. Two. two. Your answer will be option two. Sorry, I see they Catherine and John and and Lizard have answered that. I nearly got you lost right there, so it would have been option two. So like I said, some of the information I'm not going to be able to help you with. And this is one of them. Question three, I cannot help you with that. Question four, um, I can help you with question four because with question four, when the population is big and because it's time consuming to uh, analyze, we select from there and we create a smaller subset. So if this is the population, what will make the other one? A sample. So we create a sample, a population, and a sample. And the process that we are doing when we create a sample, and it come, the name sample comes from that process as well. It's called what? That's what the question is asking you. Am I doing a triangulation am i doing operationalization am i doing a sampling and yes someone posted uh, the message disappeared quickly before i could read yes we're doing a sampling sampling. Uh, okay, uh, empirical knowledge, that one, I'm sorry, I cannot help you with that. So you will just have to, some of the, some of the things are more psychological research linked than my statistics background. And also you must know that I come from a pure state, I don't come from a research state. So I am, the one that I can't help you with, I will skip. Uh, like describing what the latent variable is, you need to know what the latent variables are and what the constructs are. You can just, uh, those I'm going to skip. Um, in terms of dependent and independent, I'm going to skip it because we already has have explained what dependent and independent are. Um, a, for example, if we have an X and Y, we always say X influences Y. So if X influences Y, we say X, Y is dependent on, on X. So X becomes our independent and Y becomes our dependent. And usually dependent are also what we call outcome. So reading that statement, if you want to know whether that statement is, is it whatever they are referring to, learner's test, 
is it dependent or independent money or manifest i don't know what manifest is in terms of your research you just need to know to understand what manifest is i only know the dependent and independent and this is i can explain it up to so far i cannot in relation to the manifest one you will need to sort that one out yourself you will need to know how to define um, a scientific study that should be easy to do i'm not gonna worry myself there we explain what the population is uh, okay so because we said the population is big this is our population and we take out from that population a smaller nyana sample so this will be our population and this is our sample so when we take this population and calculate uh, not x bar when we calculate the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, all this, we call them parameters. There are parameters. When we calculate the mean, the sample, the standard deviation, we call this statistics or statistic statistics when there are so many because there are many so i can just call them individually they are called statistic so it means the measures that come from a population are called parameters the measures that comes from a sample are called statistic so you will just need to know how to define all those things right there and there to answer the question that question number 12. So population is called mm, while the measure that describes the same aspect of a sample is called mm. option one, two, and three. Will you be able to know how to answer that? Let's see. I see answers, answers, latent are hidden. Okay. I will remember that. option two because i already gave you the answer as well okay uh then i'm not sure you you never said anything about probability so i'm going to assume that you know how to answer the probability questions remember probabilities to calculate a probability of a value no oh, sorry calculate the probability of a value it's always going to be the number satisfying that divide by n and you're going to count how many numbers satisfy this so you have a jar containing five five red eight blue three green four yellow what is the probability that a blindfolded person would choose green marble so how many are they in the jar because when they go into the jar, they will. And how many in the jar are green? So the number satisfying the green. Divide by the total of them that will give you. Your answer. So you need to add all of the marbles that you have and you need to divide the number of green marbles by how many marbles you have and that will give you your answer that you are looking for how many marbles do you have which is your total there are three marbles in the jar that are green. How many in total do you have? Eight plus five is, okay, I see there. I have an answer. Let's see. Oh, you're giving me an answer. You're not giving me the total number. I was expecting the, the number 20. There are 20, there are 20 marbles. 
which is 0, 0,15, which is option one. Uh, okay. So you need to know that the total, which is N, is also called a sample, a sample space, because it's all of them. It's all of them. If I have a deck of cards, and the deck of cards have 13 cards in them, in the box, so all 13 form part of a sample space. If I have a die with all the six sides, all six sides of a die form part of a sample space. Question 14, you should be able to know how to answer question 14 because I also just gave you the answer. Uh, let's see, it asks, a list of all outcomes that are possible in a statistical experiment is called, I don't have to ask you that question because I just gave you the answer. Okay. Um, Okay, this one you need to go and read as well. It talks to when you increase or decrease the sample size, what happens? Is this a law of large number? Anyway, instead we don't even talk about that. So you should know that some of the things that you're not familiar with, you can just say uh, that is not correct. Then you are left with two. Is it the central limit theorem or is it the effect size? So it's not going to be the law of large numbers. Okay. Now, a test for a short-term memory capacity is normally distributed with the mean of 100, the standard deviation of 10. What is the probability that a person chosen at random will have a score of X more than. Okay, so here we're talking about. Um, Elizabeth. Yes. Um, just just a reminder that the students need to complete the um the, the attendance register. Eh? Yes. Thank um, you. we did post it. I did mention it. I will mention it again. So you have posted it. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I will remind them again as well before we leave today. Okay, so this question is asking, will a score of X equals 125 or more? This is a question that you need to solve using the Z score, not the, the one with the uh, standard error, the normal Z score and go and use a table to find the probability because that's what we want. We want the probability that a person is chosen at random will have a score of more than <clears throat> 125. So we need to calculate the probability that a score will be more than 125. So I'm going to give it to you, give to you the formula which we know that the formula for Z is X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Based on the question, you are given the mean, you are given the standard deviation. You are also given your X value. Substitute into the formula and calculate. That's all what you need to do. Substitute the values and calculate. Are you winning? You have an answer?
or are you lost? Talk to me. I am not getting it. You're not getting it. So your X is what you are given in the question. So it's 125. Your mean it's given to you there, which is 100 divided by your standard deviation, which is 10. When you answer questions, please do them step by step. So 125 minus 100. If I use my calculator here, yes. so it's 125 minus 100 and then equal, that gives me 25, divide by 10, equal, that gives me 2.25. Answer here is 2.25. Remember our question is to go find the probability. I hope in this we do have tables. So this is where you need to use a table. So you need to go to the prob uh, probability normal distribution table. And they also give you formulas in the exam. So we need to come here. Oh, your module is that one where we talk about the larger and the smaller. Oh, um, this is a question I had. Um, unless we draw the diagrams to look at the portion, the grade section, how do we know? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I yes. also did so, the calculation. I got 2.5, not 2.25. What do I get? 2.5. Did I write 2.25? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cool. Let's blame it on the night. <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> we will blame it on a long day. Because on the calculator it says 2.5. I don't know where I got 2.25. Okay. Maybe 2 is my lucky number. Okay, so. Uh, hey. You know, the difficulty with your module is I need to always refresh my mind in terms of the larger and the, the, the smaller. So this says greater than. Um, in order for me to know how to assist you as well, let me. Um, I must I must open my. Because I don't want to to give you wrong. Information. Uh, no, uh, let's go to, don't I have a, there we go. Because your table looks different to the one I'm used to. So I'm going to use the one that I'm used to, and then I'm going to go and guide you in terms of your one. So the answer I got was 2.25. So on this one, it's easy to use because this table tells me that the table I'm looking at looks at the smaller than. So it contains all probabilities that Z is smaller than any value. And I can use this. So let's see what value I get. Uh, the value that I will get here, because now I'm looking for the PZ of greater than, uh, what are we looking for? 2.5. That's what we're looking for, 2.5. So then I must say one minus the value I find on the table and the value I will find on the table will be. <clears throat> 2. 2.5 is 0, 0.9938. 0, 0.9938. So I must say uh, 1 minus 0 0.9938. Um. Oh, come on, plus 1, 
So the answer I get is zero comma. Just want the number zero comma zero zero six two. Zero zero six two. So that is the answer that we need. So coming back to your question, we go to your table. We <clears throat> OK, so because we're looking for the larger portion, so if I look at the question, most like we need to find Z greater than, so therefore greater than 2.5. So this is 0, 2.5 is somewhere here. So we're looking for this area here. So this area is the smaller area. It's not the greater area. It is the smaller area. So we need to go to Z because this site is greater. We're looking for the smaller site. So 2 point. So you need to go look where it says Z. That's what we need. Z 2.5. So it will be 2.50. 2.50. Uh, that is 5.5, five, five, so it needs to be right at the bottom. 2.50. As you can see, we are looking for the smaller than site. So 2.5, we're looking for this site. This is the larger side. This is the smaller side. So the answer is 0 0.62. So the answer is 0 0.62. Because we're looking at the smaller side. And you are right. We just need to draw a picture in order to understand this. I always need to understand from the table that I'm used to in order for me to help you as well. So as you can see from that one, because the table contains the less than, we're looking for the greater than. If we look for the greater than, we say one minus the area, the bigger area, and that gives us 0, 0,0062. So on your table, we're looking for the smaller area because this says small portion and large portion. So we need to go to the small portion. We use the Z value to locate the answer. So happy that we tie. So that is, we are left with five minutes. So the answer here is option number three. And that's how you answer the question. So let's see. Have I answered all the things that you wanted? Let's see. What happened to this, to the presentation? And the things I wrote, they disappeared. So, but you said you wanted to know what t-test is. You wanted to know how to calculate, oh, how to do the test for the means. We did look at those. You said you wanted to learn how to calculate the standard deviation. We didn't cover that. OK, we must look for a question that does that standard deviation. You also had, so we did that, we did that. You also wanted to learn how to use the table for Q. Where do we use Q? OK, let's see. Do we have anywhere where we use Q? I think Q, we use it for the non-parametric methods so let's see do we have q here so unfortunately for those ones who are writing on the second there's not much i can do to help you but those who are writing in november we will have more sessions uh, i think every second week uh, okay you only have one table so you don't have a lot of tables. So, okay. Uh, let's look for one last question. So, how to use the table? We've read that. So, it means 
if they take if they say uh let's say you calculated the z uh let's let's go down 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 let's say you calculated z uh because that table you will use it so many times you will use it also when you answer the hypothesis testing questions as well so let's say you they said calculate the probability that um the value is less than uh some some value uh, let's say some value and we find that when we calculate z and that z is minus 1.25 so oh let's not do one minus 1.25 because it will be on the smaller side let's do that let's draw that so when you draw it this will be your zero it's always zero at the in the middle because we know that the area underneath the curve is always going to be equals to one and in the middle it will be zero so if it's minus 1.25 that will be minus 1.25 there so it means we're looking for and they say less than it means we're looking for this area this is the smaller area regardless of where you are that's the smaller area this is the bigger area if it was 1.25 let's say if the answer here was 1.25 positive 1.25 then zero will be there and 1.25 will be somewhere here so we'll be looking at this this is the larger area so you need to remember that when you go to the table draw yourself a picture visualize what is it that you want to find if it's a less than you draw the less than less than greater than you must always remember that current left current right current means bigger it's not like when i say left current i'm saying all people who use right hand are superior than those who use left but i mean like right is most dominant left is the less one you must always remember that <laughs> how you draw those greater than and less than Okay, so the other one, uh, this other one, I think it's just a general. Uh, you just need to know how to calculate some of the probabilities here yeah, using the information that you are provided. Because the first one, suppose over a thousand students wrote exams in psych and 6,000 of them passed. So thousand wrote, 6,000 passed. What is the percentage of past from there? So you 10, just thousand, not a thousand. Yeah. Of which 300 obtain exactly 50%. This means that randomly selected students, the probability of obtaining at least 50 is, then you need to know what will be the 50% of those who passed, while the probability of obtaining more than 50% will be. So this says you need to calculate the probability of exactly. This means obtaining the probability of more than. You use the same. Exactly, it will mean when you go to the table. Remember, the table has three columns. Has mean to Z, a larger portion, and smaller portion. Mean to Z. Uh, this will be the probability of exactly. This will be the probability. Then you can use for more than, less than, whichever one. Is it in the large portion of the graph? Is it the large portion when you draw? Is it this large portion or is this the smaller portion? You choose that. Okay. Uh, what else is there? Trying to see if we can find somewhere where we can calculate the mean. There is no way where we calculate the mean, the standard deviation. Uh, I guess the reason why they don't want you to calculate the mean and the standard deviation is it's time consuming to calculate the standard deviation. OK, so they don't give you questions to calculate standard deviation. 
here. This is a contingency table. You need to know how to do the contingency table, how to calculate the expected values and the observed values. And that's that. Okay, and that concludes today's session. Before you leave, those who are writing, good luck. Those who are not writing, hopefully Jacques will send uh, formal communication again in terms of when we're going to have another session. And I guess that session will, we will follow a session plan where we would have a proper notes and we will discuss certain topic. I did I did create the session, but be, yeah, I'm not going to go into that detail, but we we had a, um, a session plan developed and I think we will start uh, with those sessions, maybe probably in July. And since you're writing exams, I hope the same number of people that are here, except those who are writing and feel that they would have done successfully in their exam. Uh, we will continue having our sessions, I think, on Tuesdays, same time, but I prefer to do them later in the uh, in the evening from six o'clock because I don't want to rush. Um, after my work, I rush to join the MS teams. And so at least at six, I have uh, some time because I knock off at five. So for today, it works because we're still working from home. I'm not sure in July whether they will say, come back to the office and then I have to rush to get to assist you. So, but anyway, thank you. I'm going to share with you. Please make sure that you complete the register. I'm going to share with you now a WhatsApp group where we can discuss outside of this. And also for those ones who are writing on the second, if you have any question, Elizabeth, you can use the WhatsApp group to discuss. Um, Lizzie, I want to ask, should I change it from, from 1800 hours to? Six. Yeah, from six o'clock until what time? Uh, since you... You want me to do two hours till the two hour. I'm so not saying that you two. must do two hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine until eight. So it will be, yeah, until eight. Just let, let's start them at six because, yeah, I, I might have challenges with five because sometimes I, my meetings runs up until exactly five. Okay, perfect. Perfect, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I'll share the WhatsApp, the WhatsApp on just now so that you can, you can join the WhatsApp and uh, just to assist those who are writing, you can ask any question and we can also use it for administration purpose to um, when the classes are cancelled or something or there is load shedding and we can't and we can use it to quickly share. Um, and you must know when you join my WhatsApp group, uh, I'm very strict. We don't post memes or what do you call those? Memes. Me we don't post the good morning, how are you? It's not a social. We talk uh, psych on that group. So please, I don't want to remove anyone. I will also post the the rules of the group so that everybody who joins the group understand that we're there to, to help one another with, with schoolwork and not socializing. I've just posted the in the chat you can join and we are off on a good start. And uh, let's see, uh, am I still recording? Okay, and we can stop the recording. Any question, any questions?